What I'm going to do for you in this chapter is make a few basic calculations and compare different batteries that are available on the market with their prices and characteristics as I can find them on the internet today. And then show you, of course, their dollar price per storage capacity, so for the amount of electricity that they can store. And also show you how to calculate the dollar price per energy withdrawn over, this li over their lifetime, right? What we discussed before. So you can do the apple to apple comparison. And remember, as we're going through these basic calculations, remember that one kilowatt hour equals 1000 watt hours. The kilo just stands for 1000, same as meter versus kilometer, etc. So let's go to the whiteboard and start this comparison. So we start with any kind of random battery, which has a, an absolute purchase price. Uh, we use the dollar here, the American dollar. And this battery also has its own voltage, right? We can look at the two, six, 12 volt batteries, etc. Um, then this battery has its own absolute amount of storage capacity. So that is the 100% capacity of the battery. But we almost never use all of this capacity during normal operation. So for uh, lead acid based batteries, we normally only use around 50% maximum capacity. Otherwise, it would heavily impact the, the lifetime of the battery. And as I mentioned before, lithium batteries, we can use almost all that capacity, normally you go up to 90 or 95%, which is a great advantage of lithium batteries. So you pay a lot more for the battery, but you can use much more of the capacity as well without negatively impacting the expected lifetime of the battery. Now, as I'm guiding you through this calculation, through this comparison example, uh, there's two main types of information that I will show to you. The first type of information is information that you can easily get right from the manufacturer, from the specification sheet, from the supplier. So, of course, uh, it starts with the battery type. Then we have the absolute capacity of the battery, which is normally indicated in amp hours. Then we have the price that we paid for the battery. We're using the uh, US dollar value here. Uh, that's the voltage, as I mentioned before. Then we need to decide what is the typical amount of energy that we withdraw from the battery during a typical charge and discharge cycle. Uh, so that's something that you and I decide on. And then once you've decided what your typical depth of discharge will be, then you can look up in the specification sheet from the battery what the corresponding expected cycle life of the battery will be. So the cycle life is the expected or warranted amount of times that you can discharge and charge a battery before it will reach its end of lifetime, before you need to replace the battery. So those values are relatively easy to get, right? But you need them in order to calculate the second set of values, which are finally the values that we're interested in and the values that we can use in order to do the apple to apple comparison between the batteries. So the first one is the capacity in watt hours. So the total amount of energy that the battery can store, but then not express as amp hours, but as watt hours. The second one is the dollar price per watt hour. So you just take the previous value and then compare it to the price that you paid for the battery. The third one is the cumulative amount of energy that you will be able to discharge from the battery over its entire lifetime. And this value is normally expressed in kilowatt hours and sometimes in megawatt hours. So one megawatt hour equals 1000 kilowatt hours. One kilowatt hour equals 1000 watt hours. Mega, kilo, kilo and normal. So once we have these three values, we can now calculate the lifetime cost in dollars per kilowatt hours. So this is the dollar price that we will pay for each and every kilowatt hour that we will discharge from the battery before we have to replace the battery. Now in this example, I will show you the different values of four different batteries. I'll look at three lead acid based batteries and one lithium battery. The lead acids will be the absorbed glass mat, one AGM, one flooded lead acid, and another more industrial grade flooded lead acid. And the lithium will be the, the high quality lithium ion phosphate battery. These batteries are real life batteries. I've just taken the value from the internet, but I have chosen to not show which manufacturer it is and which battery model because of certain legal concerns. And the purpose of this exercise is to teach you how you yourself can compare the batteries. Okay. But these batteries are batteries available right now on the market. 
let's look at the first battery, so the AGM battery. So the battery that I selected was a 190 amp hour battery with the price of $300 and a nominal voltage of 12 volts. So a very average off the shelf, typical consumer grade battery. We choose that we will discharge this battery typically to 50%. And then out of specifications, it will tell us that we can discharge and charge this battery for a total amount of 700 times before, before it will have reached the end of lifetime, before we need to replace it. So roughly two years. That kind of makes sense. If you would heavily use an AGM, a typical average uh, AGM battery, and use it each and every day quite intensely, then it might fill after two years. That kind of makes sense. Now we are going to use these values and then calculate the other values, right? So for the first one, for the capacity, the capacity in kilowatt hours of a battery is the voltage times the amp hours. So this is a 12 volt battery and the amp hours are 190, which gives us a capacity of 2280 watt hours. If we then take the price in dollars, which is 302, and divide it by the capacity, you get a US dollar per watt hour price of 13 cents. So if you buy this battery, you are paying 13 cents for every watt hour of battery capacity. Then the real value of what we're looking for is the lifetime cost that you would pay for the, the complete use of the battery, right? So the lifetime cost is the price divided by the cumulative amount of discharge over the lifetime of the battery. So first we calculate the cumulative discharge in kilowatt hours. So we take the, the absolute capacity of the battery, so 2,280. And then since we decide, have decided that we only use 50% of the capacity, we divide it by half and then multiply it by the amount of time that we can do this discharge charge cycle. So that brings us to 798,000 watt hours or 798 kilowatt hours. Right, and then we take the price that we paid for it, and the value that rolls out of there is 38 cents per kilowatt hour discharge over the lifetime of the battery. So you buy the battery, $300, you use it until you have to replace it, and then when you look back after the 700 cycles, you know that you have paid 38 cents for every kilowatt hour of electricity that you have discharged from this battery. All right, let him shut up for a second. I just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of energy systems. If this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go ahead again. Okay, so now that you know how it works, let's do the same for the second battery. And we're going to run through this a little bit faster because you understand the general principle, right? How to calculate it. So this is a six volt battery, the typical golf cart battery, right? The six volt flooded lead acid battery with a capacity of 225 amp hours. So we set the depth of discharge again to 50%. And, the, and therefore we get from the specification sheet that the expected cycle life before end of lifetime is 1200. So then we take these values and we crunch them together and calculate the other values, which means that, so this battery has 1,350 watt hours, so quite a bit less than the previous AGM battery. And this battery is of a higher quality. We pay more for it. So you can say that we paid more initially per the amount of watt hours that we purchase. But now you can see that for this option, for this golf cart battery, the price that you pay the lifetime cost is substantially lower. It's 29 cents per kilowatt hour discharged over the lifetime over the battery. Um, so if you would compare these two batteries side by side and say, okay, I'm into the, the long-term cost, what do I pay for the usage cost? And the golf cart battery would be your better option in this situation. So now let's look at the next battery. It's a six volt flooded lead acid industrial grade battery, which will be available to you as well. Uh, you do not have to be a company in order to get this battery. It's just a high quality battery. Uh, you can see that it has quite a bit more capacity, even though it's six volt. It is not similar to your golf cart battery because this battery weighs over 200 pounds. And you can see that the cycles for this battery are amazing. If you choose the 50% diff of discharge, you can still get 3,600 cycles out of this battery before you need to replace it, which I think is quite amazing for a lead battery. 
Now if we take these values and we would crunch them together, they get all the other values. So you can clearly see here that the capacity of this battery is substantially higher than the other two, which is to be expected. It's a really large battery. Um, you're also paying more per absolute amount of energy storage com than compared to the AGM and the 6 volt golf cart battery. So it's 24 cents per watt hour. But now you can see that all of a sudden the cumulative amount of discharge you can discharge over its lifetime is substantially higher as well. So we've got a value of just over 5,000 kilowatt hours before you need to replace the battery. And the result of all of this is that you are paying 13 cents per kilowatt hour of electricity discharged over the lifetime of the battery. So this value is substantially better than the other two. So let's park this here and now let's look at the last battery the lithium ion phosphate battery. So I took a an off the shelf lithium ion phosphate battery, you call it a drop in replacement, because most of the times you can replace it for the, the typical truck batteries. Uh, it has a nominal voltage of 13 volts. We choose to use this battery for 90% of its capacity. At this point, you get a, a relatively optimal amount of cycles. So you can see that this battery, even though it's a relatively small battery, you get 4,000 cycles out of it. A little bit more uh, if you use less of the capacity of the battery, a little bit less if you push it up to 95 and 98 percent. Now you can see that this battery costs quite a bit more than the other three as well. It's $799. Now the result of these values are that this battery has the highest price per absolute amount of storage capacity. You probably expect that, right? But the lifetime cost of this battery is 17 cents. It's somewhere in the same region as the industrial grade flooded lead acid battery. Both the lithium and the industrial lead battery way outperform the other two lead batteries by means of the lifetime cost of the battery, right? You've got 13 and 17 cents versus the 29 and 38 cents. But you can also see that the the first two batteries are way lower by means of the um, the initial price that you pay per the amount of capacity, right? For the first two, it's 13 and 17 cents. Now, um, I thought this was an interesting analysis for you, and you can see kind of what the process is of how to compare batteries on an apple to apple, uh, through an apple to apple comparison. Um, I want to place a note for the lithium, because this battery that I selected is an off the shelf unit which is a, it's a drop in replacement so it already has a protective equipment inside of the battery the bms it requires a bit more technology in order to operate the lithium battery safely i've chosen to not include the comparison of another option but i do want to mention it to you so that you're aware of it you could drastically reduce the price that you pay so the lifetime cost for the lithium battery which currently stands on 17 cents you could drastically reduce this price and you go often well below the 13 cents that I have for the other lead battery if if you would source all the components individually. Um, some people choose to purchase separate lithium cells and then just combine these cells together by themselves, include the BMS and other protective systems. I believe it falls somewhat out of the scope of this course because it really requires a quite a different level of expertise in order to do this safely. For So for that reason, I have not included this uh, in this comparison, but I just want to mention to you that it is possible in case you speak to other people to say like, wow, this lithium is way cheaper than, than these values. So just for, for you to be aware.